What's your personal view on climate change? Right, Bruce, would you like to take that? Yeah, I, I, I despair of the, of the uh, public cynicism about climate change. And I think it's largely because we live in, in Great Britain, which has incredibly variable weather. If you were living in sub-Saharan Africa and you saw that the Sahara Desert was expanding by a mile per year, every year, and your crops were failing year on year, you'd realise there was climate change. If you lived in the Pacific Islands and you saw the sea level changing so that your, your very homeland was in danger of disappearing, you'd know there was climate change. If you were an Inuit living on the Arctic tundra by the Arctic Sea and you saw the permafrost melting and you saw that your homestead was slipping into the ocean whereas it stood on ice for, for generations, you'd know there was climate change. It is the most important threat to humanity facing us. And we have got to take it seriously. That's my view on climate change. Thank you very much, Bruce. <laughs> Tim, would you like to take that question? Yes. Um, I'm going to be very frank about all this. I don't think that uh, the, there is any very... There's clearly global warming. Whether that's caused by man isn't very clear. Uh, and there have been, uh, there, there were vineyards in Yorkshire um, in the 13th century. Um, you know, the, the Gloucestershire in Roman times produced lots of wine because it was warmer than now. Uh, we don't know that it's caused by man. And I think the kind of policies that are being pursued at the moment are extraordinarily expensive and very wasteful, in particular offshore wind. Ladies and gentlemen, let's just be clear about this. The more resources we put into offshore wind, the fewer resources we have for hospitals and schools. Don't think these people are nice people because they're, we're all worried about the future of the world. You be clear it costs something. The more we spend looking after carbon reduction, the less we have for other things. We need to be absolutely sure the evidence is correct. It is, it is in my view, not at all clear that mankind is causing global warming. And I, I don't agree at all with, with what's been going on in terms of public policy the last five or ten years. Not at all. Thank you, Tim. James? Uh, I'm a Green, um, and uh, climate change is absolutely um, at, the, at the heart of, of, of what we are trying to do. Um, we, the, there's one way of looking at climate change, and that is that 97% um, that of it is, uh, is, 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 is natural. And there's about 3%, okay, which is, which is caused by man. And the way you need to look at it is if you keep dribbling little bits of water into a full glass, it spills over. And in the end, if we raise our temperature by 2 degrees, we are going to have runaway climate change, and we are going to be in serious trouble. Very serious trouble. Now, what Tim said about people making money out of climate change is correct, and I think it's great. I think there are, and we have a policy of creating a million jobs through insulating our houses, through through using less energy, by and by by creating less carbon. We're going to spend less money. It's fantastic. It's a win-win situation. So yes, the the question was a personal view on climate change. Yes, of course, it's there. And, uh, of course, the intergovernmental panel, panel on climate change of, uh, of the scientists around the world agree. Um, but there are opportunities in it. We must take them. Thank you very much, James. Mark, would you like to take that question? Uh, I think we do need to uh, change the way we generate our energy. We do need to be less dependent on carbon-based fuels. Far too much of our energy is generated from oil and gas, and we actually need to spread... Uh, those resources. There's some difficult questions that come up for it, but particularly for, for, for Greens, one of the big challenges is how much of our electricity generation do we want to get from nuclear power, for example? We have about, or well, have done about 20% of our energy generation from nuclear power. Uh, the current fleet of nuclear stations, as they decommission, uh, uh, will disappear, and the government's just belatedly taken a, a decision to have some new ones, and I think that's absolutely right. I think we need some energy generated from oil and gas, some from nuclear, some from renewables, but I also think there's a big push as well on energy efficiency to make sure that we actually use less power 
And, and one of the things we've said we want to do is make sure that households can have up to six and a half thousand pounds of money spent on energy efficiency measures that will be uh, recouped from savings in electricity bills uh, and energy bills over the future to help make our homes particularly more energy efficient because that's where an awful lot of the fuel goes. And I think if we were to do both of those things, a more diverse energy mix and more energy efficiency, I think we'd be a lot better off. Um, can James just answer that? Uh, thank you. Um, yes, there's been uh, some debate amongst Greens about nuclear. The Green Party is very, very clear that we are against nuclear for a number of reasons. It is quite extraordinarily expensive. Uh, Barclay, just across the river, um, has just reduced its workforce from 500 people to 250 people because they have completely given up with the idea of decommissioning it. There were 500 people there, employed, just to make sure the thing, you know, remain safe, and that's now been reduced to 250 people, there is still no idea of where this waste is going to go. Thank you. And Thank you, James. Chris? Um, if, as Tim says, um, the future of the world cost something, can I say that I will be at the front of that queue with my hand in my pocket? Um, it is a price we have to pay. It is our future. It is the future for generations to come. My personal view is that climate change is real and that we must act and failure to act will be absolutely catastrophic and generations to come will look back at us with absolute shame. I'm not interested in having the debate as to who is to blame because I think that takes too much time. We must act now. I have a good amount of sympathy, of course, uh, with the Green Party, uh, but I'm bound to say that each of our manifestos for, gosh, the last four, five, six general elections has had a green element to every single policy. And so I would say that the Liberal Democrats are as green a party uh, and you should be attracted to that. So what do we mean? We need to change the way that we use power. That's the first thing that we must do. We must change the way that we use things, improve and increase recycling, for example. But also we need to create new ways of gaining power and be realistic, but also optimistic about the, the potential that there is. So tidal power, solar power, wind power are all realistic and viable op um, opportunities that we are presented with. We must make the decision now uh, to support that sort of approach to our environmental and energy policy. In terms of dealing with the nuclear point, uh, just to make sure that you're all clear, Liberal Democrats are against nuclear power. We think it is too costly. The reality is that it will take too long and it's not safe. Thank you, Chris.